not very long ago on a very hot and sultry night, but a very nice Ohio Valley night. I had a great big country and western show. They tore the place up. The scene was the state fairgrounds and the, the uh, place where ordinarily you would see the football games and the baseball games. But this time was transformed. And just behind home plate, they had some of the biggest stars in the business, one of whom is my guest this morning. Conway Twitty, a man with an unusual name and an unusual talent. He appeared here with Loretta Lynn and a bunch of other uh, country and western singers and they broke up the place. Well, they took time off and we're actually right now, we're recording, we're right near home plate, you know that. Yeah, Are you a baseball right player, it, yeah. Conway? In fact, I played center pro ball, had a contract with the Phillies at one time. Really? Yeah. And it was touch and go, whether it was sports or uh, music? Yeah, it really was. Well, I, uh, I was supposed to go to spring training in March and I got drafted in January. And I went into the Army. I played baseball in the Army and uh, also played music. When I got out of the Army, that's when Elvis was first getting started. Yeah. I got back to the United States and I, I heard uh, my first Elvis Presley record. And uh, I really liked it and decided, well, I think I can do that. I'd always loved country music, but I never thought I could, I never thought I could do it justice, you know. Well, and, was Presley, when you heard Presley, did you think this is very good, or this is a great performer. What, what do you think? When I thought it was a great performer. It knocked me out like it did millions of others, you know. And uh, uh, no, I thought it was great. In fact, uh, I was out in Vegas this week, and I saw him again. And he's still, I think he's better than he ever was. He played here not long ago, inside, not, not, you know, not 200 feet from where we're sitting. Came out like Superman with a great big white cape. Yeah. Or a powder blue one. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like it was going to fly out over the audience. Yeah. Actually, then you have been on the brink of several careers. You you could have been a, a ball player. You really started in rock music, and yeah. now you have switched to, which, country. to country music. I like to say that I've, I've worked my way up to country music because I really didn't think I was good enough to sing country music, but I thought I was good enough to sing rock music. And that's not, uh, I'm not saying, that's not, not saying anything bad toward rock and roll music. It's just a different style, but I thought I could do it. And uh, I stayed in it about eight years and had pretty good success at it. I had a few million sellers. You sure did. And uh, then I thought one day, I thought, well, maybe I've lived long enough. Uh, maybe I've been around enough and experienced enough to sing a good country song and, and get up on the same stage with people like uh, Farron Young and Ray Price and Loretta Lynn. And uh, so I, I made the now change. Now, some of your duets with Loretta Lynn have been fabulous successes and some of your singles. Now, you have a bus, incidentally, the bus is parked there, it says Twitty Birds. What does that mean on the front well, of the bus? That's the name of my group. Oh, for years, uh, well, I had a million seller called Lonely Blue Boy back in the rock days, and the name of my group was the Lonely Blue Boys, but the, when I got into country music, the disc jockeys all over the United States kept calling, here he is, the Twitty Bird, Conway <laughs> Twitty, you know, so I just, uh, I just changed the name of my group to the Twitty Birds. You know, in that great Broadway musical and later the motion picture, Bye Bye Birdie, the uh, leading character, obviously patterned after uh, Presley, was called Conrad Birdie. Conrad Birdie, yeah. Now that, it's not a coincidence that that name no, is so close to yours. No, it's not a yours. coincidence. I, I had the first script to Bye Bye Birdie on my desk in New York, back uh, right after it's only make-believe was sold about eight million. And uh, the people came in, and it, it wasn't even a Broadway show yet. And they wanted to know if I wanted to play the part of Conrad Birdie. Wanted to know, first of all, if it's right to use that name, you know. We told them, yeah, they, oh, they did ask you. Yeah, they did ask me. And I uh, wanted to know if I wanted to play the part of uh, Conrad Birdie. And I thought about it for a little while. I told them, no, uh, I didn't want to be tied down in one town on one street. I thought I needed to be out across the country, letting everybody see what a Conway Twitty looks like. <laughs> it was and, good uh, publicity after all, though. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, no, I, I made the, the uh, right decision. Of you course, Bye Bye Birdie went on to be a phenomenal success. Yeah. But uh, that wasn't the real me, that, <laughs> that character in there. I didn't no, like no. Well, it was a, probably a comp uh, composite of several people. It was. It really was. Incidentally, now you're a folk hero. You're, wherever you go, you know, people besiege you for autographs. They uh, want to take a picture with you. You'll get big money. How has this affected you? Do you can you still live the, the kind of life that you want to with your family and your friends? Definitely do. That, that's never, it's never uh, affected my way of living. Uh, of course, it has to, to a certain degree, but not enough to where you can really tell it, I don't think. Uh, we're still country boys, and we still in, enjoy the same things that we enjoyed uh, years before we had uh, hit records and all that kind of stuff. And 
Do you still have the same friends, Conway? Still have the same one. Probably the boys in my group have been with me like 15 years. And some of the people that work for me have been with me that long. What do your friends and relatives call you? They call me Conway. Do they? I, yeah, it took a long time for me to get used to that. Even my mother called me that. Really? And when someone, my real name's Harold Jenkins, very seldom somebody says Harold. Do you turn around when they say Harold? Yeah, it kind of sounds strange. <laughs> uh, I, how not about, nearly as strange as Conway Twitty did. <laughs> yes. Did you laugh when they wanted to lay that on you in the beginning? Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was, I was in on it. The name came from Conway, Texas, and or Conway, Arkansas, and Twitty, Texas. Well, well, on that program, we have a lot of uh, housewives, mothers, uh, people, uh, mostly women, because ours is a morning program. You find that your type of entertainment, your show, appeals to uh, one age group more than another? No, not anymore. Uh, the, the shows that we play out around the country now, you have a, an awful lot of young people. A lot of them. Especially started happening about three years ago, and you can watch, like in the rock days, used to, uh, the kids back when, you know, back when we grew up, yes. uh, my kids don't like me to say this, <laughs> I don't like you to talk about back when you right, grew up. Right, right. Uh, kids would be seen and not heard, and that's the way it was. You know, you didn't go button into uh, affairs that didn't that you, that you weren't supposed to. And uh, but when when the rock thing started, kids started getting some recognition. You know, and they started getting these big numbers to get together, and uh, people would write about them and be on TV, and, and they began to realize that they had strength in numbers. You know, and they began to do things that they never did, and you could watch it just day by day almost. Wasn't that a big change? and gave great stature to country music when Bob Dylan came down to Tennessee and recorded a whole album of le legitimate, authentic country and western songs? Yeah, a anytime some someone like Bob Dylan does that, it helps to, I don't like to use that term, bridge the gap. Because, I, you know, I really don't think there is a no, gap. No. But, uh, it, it really helps to uh, pull everything closer together. And then Ray Charles did his uh, country album that he did, which was sold three or four million copies. Conway, if you had it to do all over again, would you change your life in any way? I think I'd do it exactly the same way. You a happy man? I sure am. Been real lucky and very fortunate. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Conway Twitty, all-American country and western singer. We'll be back in just a minute.